So in this video, we'll look at the current system and we are continuing our discussion on solving the linear system by our method of Gaussian elimination. And if you look at this system, which is in matrix form, the fact is that we have to make the three numbers here zero by certain row operations. And these are the numbers that are below the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right on the left hand side. And um, we can actually um, tweak quick if you are already very familiar with the method. The fact is that we can make this one zero by using the first row. And please think about that. On the row two, you have minus two, right? And on the row one, on the first column, you actually have one. And to make it zero by some row operations, what we can do is, I believe, is plus two times row one for the row two. Because in that case, when you look at this, it's going to be zero. So it means that we first keep the first row unchanged. And then, starting from the row two, what we can do is row two plus two times row one. And in that case, um, we don't have to care about the row three. We just look at the row two now. The first number is zero because of the this calculation and for the second spot it's going to be 7 plus 2 times 4 right so it's going to be 15 so I just write 15 here and for the last spot it's going to be 9 plus 2 times row 1 which is 2 right so it's going to be 13 in that case and how about the last number the last number is going to be row 2 which is 10 plus 2 times 5 so it's going to be 10 plus 10 which is 20 and the row three we can actually do it on the same step by using the row one and um, let me write it down here so you see um, on the row three we actually have minus one and on the row one we actually have one and to find an operation to make it zero i think it's clear we can just add them together right so it means for the last row it's going to be row three plus row one right so um i've done it already for the first spot in the first column for the second column, row 3 is 11 plus 4, which is 15. And then for the last spot on the left hand side, it's going to be row 3, which is 11 plus 2 on the first row. It's going to be 13, right? And the last number here, uh, row 3 is 15 plus row 1, which is 5. It's going to be 20. So you see now we are arriving at this updated matrix form of the linear system. And please note that usually the next step is for you to eliminate the 15 and you're allowed to use the row operation from row two only. Because um, like what we have done in the last couple of videos, at this stage of the row operations, we cannot use the row one anymore because um, we have the first spot, which is non-zero, it's gonna be making this number non-zero, which is something we don't want to do. So uh, please, you can only use the row two now uh, for the next part of the row operation. And I think it's quite clear. If you look at the row two and row three, they are exactly the same in all three spots. It essentially means um, we can essentially just simply do row three minus row two for the last line now. And let's just write down all the things here. You see the first two lines are unchanged because I'm not doing any row operations on them, but I just want to update the last row. And after row 3 minus row 2, I think I'm getting all zeros here. And if you try to go back to the original system, let's see what's happening here. So you see the special thing is about the last line. It's going to be 0 equals 0. It is correct. It is sensible. And, uh, but it carries no information at all to solve our system of linear equations, right? So we can cancel this line. It doesn't help us at all which means now we're actually left with only two equations, but we actually have three unknowns. And uh, for such a system, there's no chance we can arrive at uh, exactly one set of solutions. Because usually to arrive at one set of solutions, we need um, the number of equations to be at least the same as the number of unknowns. So let me write the notes here. We can't have exactly one set of solutions for x, y, z. And what you need to do now in this case is uh, we kind of know that we actually have infinitely many solutions simply because of the fact that we don't have enough equations to determine the number of unknowns. And it doesn't matter, we can still write our answer in a better way by using a parametric form. Parametric form basically means that we have to use some parameter uh, to represent all our solutions x, y, z 
let's say we can uh, let z be t and you are free to choose other variables but i just uh, by convention start with the last variable z so in that case um in the second equation we actually have 15y plus 13t equals 20 and you have to do the job to transform uh, the equation into the form where the left hand side contains only y so basically y is a function of t now t is our parameter basically so uh, y actually equals 20 minus 13 t divided by 15 right or i can write it in a slightly better way you actually have something like that and uh, for the x you can do something similar the fact is that we can use the first equation and x plus four times open bracket 20 divided by 15 minus 13 over 15 times t plus 2 z z is actually t equals 5 and of course uh, you can do some arithmetic yourself so actually we can actually write the x in a slightly simplified way so it means what uh, it means all our answers now are in terms of the parameter t right where t is any real value so we can simply replace t by any values and we'll get a new set of solutions for x, y, z. So uh, it basically means we have infinitely many solutions in T. Let me write it down here. So we see the, the solutions all can be written in this form where T can be any value. And uh, this system is still consistent, but uh, we don't have exactly one set of solutions. What we have is an infinitely many number of solutions here. And that's the end of this video.